In no particular order this morning, as the pastor, I'm led of God. I want to thank God for the strength that Elder Curry had to sing this morning. And the choir, come on, y'all have to. And Pastor Tamika Robinson directing the choir, stepping in when needed. Thank God for executive pastor this morning. The Lord bless her. And since she no longer pastors, you can tell her dress code has changed immensely. Want to thank God. <laughs> Want to thank God for the assistant pastor as well today. Father Hope, Dr. Barbara, Bishop L.K. Robinson, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Raheem Warren. Thank all of you. And all of you that are amongst our people and our kind, if you're a pastor or a licensed ordained minister or elder, please stand so we can clap for you. If you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, there are two, three, four. Can we clap for all of them? Five. Thank you. Thank you for coming to hear this little five, six and a half man this morning. I feel tall. I found two people last night shorter than me and I grew up. We have visitors. I have a lot to acknowledge. Uh, this person is from Flint, Michigan. Now hear me. This is a longtime E-member who decided to leave Flint to come have in-person church with their brothers and sisters. I don't hear nobody. Selena Charm Shepherd, can y'all thank God for her? We love you. I'm glad to be your pastor. I can't get some of y'all to come from around the corner. But I got people with an appetite to say, I'm tired of just watching. I have to get in there. I'm so glad to have her. She didn't come alone. She brought someone from Lakeside, Arizona. It's Makayla Vasquez stand. Makayla? Come on, make these long traveling people feel at home. Lord Jesus. I don't even know where that is. I've been everywhere. Where is Lakeside close to? It's in the mountains. That's why I ain't been there. I'm afraid of heights. So let me get out of here. This person came to us from YouTube. They go to Leeks Temple Church of God in Christ in Memphis, Tennessee. Two of them. It's Mariah C. Leek and Yolanda Leek is the mom. Where are both of you? Hey, I know y'all. That's my baby. Y'all clap better. I appreciate it. Guest of Bishop L.K. and Pastor Tamika Robinson, who we love as my son and daughter. Clap for them. They are... They brought guests with them. Ramsey Wilson, where are you, Ramsey? Stand. Y'all clap better for a well-grown brother. Thank you for coming. Hopefully you don't say too much bad about us. We know we off the chain, we need prayer. Facebook, Ocala, Florida. Wesley Wilson and Felita Kincaid. Where are you, Kincaid? All right, let's clap for both of them. I'm excited. This one said they heard about us through the Kojic Network. I like when people give big words in fancy terms, because that means they're intelligent. They're from Winter Park, Florida. It's Drayon and Val Beecham. Where are you? Drayon and Val Beecham. Let us give. Are y'all coaching? Are y'all coaching also? Yeah, work. 
Grew up coaching? Good. You cannot join in. You got to be born in. No beat. This is the church of God in Christ. Now, my bishop is the presiding prelate of the church of God in Christ, Bishop J. Drew Sheehan, Detroit, Michigan. Please applaud him in Jesus' name. Tampa, Florida's in the house, guests of Elder Donitra preaching machine Eddings. Kali Abdullah, where are you? Kali Abdullah, can we clap for Kali if she's in your section? This person came word of mouth from Judah Church, Orlando, Florida. They're from Judah Church, I've heard of them, Orlando, Florida. Donovan and Candace Cohen, where are both of you? Let's clap for them. Are y'all brothers or sisters or man? Mary, is there somebody sitting in the middle, y'all? Oh, okay, because I was wondering why you're so far away from each other. And what's his name? Aylin? Aiden? Aiden Cohen? Get up, Aiden, so we can clap for you. <laughs> Live Church Orlando. Heard of us from a family friend. It's Anisha Bob. Where are you, Anisha? Where are you? Let's clap. Anisha. I'm sorry, Anisha. I ain't gonna mess name up. You ain't gonna go out here talking about me. Let's rewind. Yeah, live church. Y'all ain't talking to me. Heard from a family friend. Anisha Bob, stand so we can thank God for you again. This person's from a church that I've known very well, Abyssinia Union Free Will Baptist Church, Mount Vernon, New York. Let's clap for Mount Vernon. They are the guests of Nisha and Nathaniel Mason Stan. Both of you again, they keep bringing me more members and more members. They just keep bringing me guests up in here. These two people are God's elect. We scream loud for people. Bishop Michael and Lady Pamela James. Thank you for coming, Bishop. And Bishop, you're gonna have a better seat. You and your wife, you want one, I'll put somebody out. See, thank you, people will gladly move. You two, New Jerusalem. Hold on, that's my best friend's church. That's my best friend's church, High Point, North Carolina. I hope this is Bishop Kevin Williams' member, because that's my best friend among five. Alice Smith, where are you? Clap for Alice Smith, will y'all? You members of Bishop Kevin Williams' church? You go there? Oh, you heard me there? And then, you don't live here? You taking vacation? Been in the car, got a hotel, and make sure you came to us. Come here so I can hug you. That's a lot to do. Y'all clap better for someone that does all of this. She said, I honor you, Bishop, and I got a seed I want to sow. I got to get it. You, 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 um, go do what the Lord tell you to do. <laughs> tell you, God will send people from everywhere. Tampa, Florida, they are guests of Alice Smith. Where's Alice? Where's Alice? Where's Alice Smith? I don't see her standing. That was the same one I called. She bought someone else. Alice had the nerve to come up here. Ken Tia Booth, where's Ken Tia? Am I, am I saying that right? Stop. Say it for me. Kentaya? Kentaya. I should have said it because they wrote it right. They put K-E-N-T-I-E. -E. I said, I know it ain't Ty, because my office mess up a name every week. 
This time I gotta apologize to them. Kentaya Booth, can we clap for her? Detroit, Michigan is in the house, clap for Detroit. They are guests of our own, Pastor Raheem Warren. Aaron Mingo, where's Aaron Mingo? There goes Aaron, clap for Aaron. And last but not least, word of mouth, Bloomington, Minnesota, I'm gonna believe, Minneapolis. All right, well, I'll find out. Bianca Jean, where are you? Bianca's way over there, let's clap for Bianca. If you're in her area, get loud over there. Now, Bianca, where is Bloomington? Okay, Minneapolis. Yeah, okay, I've been there, but not to Bloomington. I've been a lot of places. We had 22 visitors today, and I think we should thank God for all of them. I'm about to preach in a minute. Our, uh, one of our members, is getting a lot of exposure. Their family is being blessed. Um, and I'm talking about the Vickers family. Stan Vickers. <laughs> Praise your own people. Their son, put it up, their son. Our member who dances. I don't hear you clapping, he dances. He won the Super Bowl on yesterday, his team. Lyric Vickers, the team Trey Man Jags. He's offensive guard and center. They won and at three o'clock he's on his way to Miami, Florida as a champion. I don't hear nobody in the sport. Yeah, y'all see that trophy in his hand? Mac and cheese on his back, y'all. Number 33. We are glad to have successful and gifted, talented young people. Can we clap for them in Jesus' name? Last night, the Reverend John P. Key was in concert for you that don't follow church, that's why you missed it. He was in a free, full-fledged. It was completely off the chain. I and assistant pastor, we went together. They gave us seats, we could barely see because every time someone sang, 300 children ran up to the front. We had great seats, poor vision, great seats. They honored us, took a lot of pictures, but our church is becoming so known, please hear me and you should clap for your own, to where everyone is using our band, our psalmists, our backup singers, and now our lead singers. You should clap better than that because something wrong with you. John Vickers opened up for John P. Key last night. And he and this entire minstrel band, when I say, when I say y'all some bad boys, y'all play better outside than you do here, but y'all some bad boys. Y'all sing better outside too, but y'all, y'all some bad boys. I'm glad to have you as sons and members. I'm proud of you, proud of the exposure you get, but I'm more proud that y'all have a discipline to be accountable. Most people chase the cheese. They don't chase understanding it didn't happen till they joined here. So you never disconnect from where everything happened. But Corey and Elder Vickers, I call them Jonathan and these guys, they sang original songs, nobody else songs. 
Uh, they must have had a separate rehearsal because our praise team, along with others, they knew all the words. And they sang with him, and they were very jovial and very excited. I want you to get a peek, because they didn't know I did it, of what happened last night. Play the first one. Y'all don't want to clap for Jonathan Vickers. He was so good that something else happened next. See, poor Frog don't praise his own pawn, so some of you hate I'm ready for the word. I'm ready to let you see him. Play the next thing that I said. John B. I'm not a pastor who supports, unless I'm out of town by Facebook, but all of the people that are great, that are doing things, see, this church does not know who they have, what they have, and y'all are still too familiar with the gifts that sit among you. But I was not supporting from afar. I was there, I snuck in, play it. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here, Bishop Anthony, they told me that was your song, so I threw it in there for you, bro. I hear my nephew is here, Bishop Todd Hall. I can't see you, but I- Now, I'm listen to me. Thank you for praying for me early year. I got your messages. I appreciate you. You and your brothers have been my brothers for over 40 years. And since you still look 22, I ain't gonna tell the whole story. But I love you, I love you for being consistent. 
in the faith. When I see you, I stick my chest out. And I just praise God for the gift that he bestowed upon you. Let's show him some more love in here. All right. Let's give that love to Jesus Christ. We're going to the word of the Lord. Thank you for allowing me to take that time out because I don't think that we should overlook people. And most pastors want the church to be all about them. But I like celebrating the achievement of other people. Some of you won't scream because where you could have prospered, you wasted your gifts and talents. So God put somebody in the place where you were not taking advantage of that space. Now you're seeing what yourself could have done if yourself would have submitted. Give me a little highs on these mics. So I want you to clap. Thank you for the gift that's sitting next to you that you don't even know about yet. This is a church for you to connect with today, to be a member of, because I feel the leading of God at the end to open it. So I'm giving you time to hear me speak to make your final decision. Anything uncovered will spoil. I don't care what you say about hurt by pastors, bishops. You've been hurt by your boss, but you didn't quit your job. You've been hurt by your spouse, but y'all still stay in the same house. God is priority. Will you tell two or three people that God is priority? Get your Bibles. We've been talking about sowing and reaping. If you miss Wednesday, you miss something for real. Wednesday is my favorite day. I try to tell, especially the men that I hang with and those that I sigh and father and give advice to, that they need to make more time for Jesus and not for what they're doing. Because when what you do, do you, he ain't going to help you. The same way you have to take your prescriptions every day, take as needed and when necessary, be in class by a certain time, show up to your dental appointment, God should be on your permanent schedule. Somebody clap for that because it's the truth. Now, they can get angry with me all they want to, but they ain't going to do nothing to me. Now, they can get angry but ain't nothing they gonna do to me. Especially for telling you the awakening truth. Your day should begin with Christ. You should have a lunch time with Christ. The Muslims do it four times. Yeah, see, look, y'all know I don't, I'm not Islamic, five times. Ethiopian Christians who worship like Muslims but they serve Christ, they do it four. Certain Jews do it three. You probably do it a half a day because you're too busy chasing something that's running away from you. Did I get some help right there? Y'all don't look for the word to be so friendly when I get up, do you? Because by now, you ought to know I'm hardcore. I come and then I leave you nice. I am not Oprah, I'm Dr. Phil, like for real. I'm raised by a father, I'm not a mommy's boy. My daddy been in my life until this very present day and still acts like he can beat me in his 80s. And he probably can. But on Wednesday, I suggested to those who attended the service the day before Thanksgiving, which was a healthy group, and I commend you all, I suggested to them that the seed that we need to sow is ourselves. We are not at the money part, we're at the people part. Touch somebody and ask them, are you a seed that I need?
And some of you that are here that are biblicists, you are theologians in your own right, as the old term say, in your own writ, I want to suggest to you that all of us that are in here that was born of a woman, our lives began from a seed. I am, can I teach like this and move quick? I am the seed of Aaron Hall, Jr. My father's father is senior. My brother is the third. My nephew is the fourth. My great nephew, I don't know where the fifth come from. I guess we got some kings in my family, but he is King Aaron the fifth. And I'm the oldest, so I don't know how my brother got my daddy's name when the name should go to the oldest child, you know. But I'm gonna let that go, because that's a mental thing for me. It all began with a seed. In everything that you basically eat as fruit, can I get a talker? God has made sure that within every fruit you eat, there's more seed. After you are born, what's in you that someone needs? Or do you throw that portion of yourself away? Let me talk to talkers. Are you only saved in church? Are you only nice for the two hours that you are portraying to be a Christian? Because some of you are in here, but I see gangster written all over you. I see druggy boy, alcoholic, domestic violence. It's on your face. Even though you got on suit, jacket, looking clean, ain't moved all service because you're an undercover domestic drug dealer addict, you one of those. And your spirit feels funny being in a, a, a real atmosphere of righteousness. What is righteousness? I think I'm born here. Righteousness is not holiness. Righteousness is a place where what's wrong feels funny because right's trying to tell you you can do better than what you're doing. Oh, I don't hear it. Righteousness is not holiness. That's why we say be holy and be righteous. They're separate. And when you're in church feeling funny, that means there are possibilities for you to be better. Because if you were through, you wouldn't feel anything. But the mere fact that you sat near somebody and they said, thank you, Jesus, and you did one of these, and you a gangster and a mobster, but now you're acting like you're a little, you know, that's your spirit submitting to the Holy Ghost that is present within these four walls. Look at someone and tell them there's hope for us. I'm trying to talk to some men who will talk to me because I am a ex-pharmaceutical salesman. Not like Dr. Depp. When I first said that, she was so caught up. She said, me too. I said, you sold drugs, Dr. Depp? She said, oh no, Satan the Lord rebuke you. No, no. I thought you meant pharmaceuticals, Bishop. I am a product of Brownsville, Brooklyn, a notorious child gangster become grown called the Tom Tomahawks, which later became Bloods. And this is terrible that you come to church and have to, for two hours, force yourself to be something you're not. Because a seed was never planted. The reason why I got saved is not because, Dr. Curry, I yielded myself to the Lord. I did that later. It's not because I was afraid of God, because I actually was not. It was not any of that. I've never been afraid of God. I've been afraid of lightning, but I wasn't afraid of God because somebody put a seed in me that if you stand by a tree, lightning will strike you. So that seed was in there. They told me that uh, uh, the thunder and lightning was God's way of talking. So they told us, cut everything off. Y'all you know I mean? See, these folk ain't so. Y'all be playing in lightning. I'll be like, time to go in. Uh, it's time. No umbrellas that got steel on them. I'm like, no, no. And we were so respectful that even though we were sinners, we wouldn't talk about a preacher and go outside. Be like, God gonna strike you dead. Y'all don't even remember that. 
Some of you fear nothing. And that makes you a dangerous human being. But I believe that the Lord became Lord of, of, over my life and Lord of my soul for two people because even though I was young, raised in a development full of degenerate people who were never supposed to read past second or third grade, but my daddy was always putting a seed in me. He said, uh, quote Psalm 23, huh? You better learn it before I get home. I was like, does he know I'm not saved? Why are you forcing your children? And why did you make me do an Easter speech? You know, see, y'all don't remember that. Why you make me do the welcome address? We welcome you once, we welcome you twice. Welcome to time, NG. Why did you torment me like that? But later on, y'all don't hear me, the thing that I thought tortured me saved my life because that seed grew. Y'all need to, you, in the beginning, it means nothing. It looks insignificant. But one planted, I thought I had preachers, another waters. But God is the only one that can bring increase. If you believe between now and Christmas, you got to increase, come and jump up, say increase and sit down. See, now you that could have jumped and didn't, it's because you have no seed. Because when you have a seed, you do as your mom and daddy tell you. You don't go to bed when you're sleepy. You go to bed because I said, it's time to go to bed. People who have no seed to sow into others. I'm gonna need your help on this, Dr. Mix, and some intelligent people. I went to a watermelon stand, and I got one of the sweetest watermelons I've ever had in my life. It was so good that I decided this is how I am, to research why this tastes so different than others. What made me research it for my one million member was it had no seeds. Y'all quiet, now I, it was very good, but it was an illusion because when it's actually God made, God made and not man tempered with, it should be able to reproduce of its own kind. Some of y'all come to church by yourself every Sunday because you're seedless. Look how faces change from, yeah, to, yep, that's me. He's seedless. You're not taking what you've heard preachers say and give it to other people, influence them to come get that experience so that they can become what God is making you be. Some of you don't even know you're selfish, but selfish is the definition of seedless. When you are, can I get some support? I want to preach. When you are seedless, you become selfish. I ain't gonna bless nobody else. No, no, there's a seed in you that you shouldn't be trying to change. Stop letting what people do to you change who you really are. Be who you are and let God take care of these, what they call GMOs. genetically manufactured, y'all ain't talking, sweet, but can't produce itself. They're the only benefactors, and they want to hear from you how good they are, but never show people how good they are.
Touch somebody and tell them I've got some seed for you today. I'm halfway there. Also want to add this, because I'm laying the foundation. Every time you speak to someone in a certain way, when you leave, your words are seeds. So you with tempers that talk while you're angry, learn to be quiet because you know you still love who you screamed at and it may not turn out the way you want it to because words take root. And throughout the day, that person starts thinking, what do they mean? I wonder what's going on. And this tree starts growing. I wish I had women to talk now. Because men get over, we get over trying to offend you easy. I said, sorry, I'm through. Man come home and expect dinner to be made. She made it, but she ain't talking. What's wrong with you? Negro, you know what's wrong with me. You left this morning with a negative seed. And you wanted a positive reaction. Oh, young, why, why you brothers ain't talking? Now I need all you men to talk from Father Hope down because I know most of you personally and most of my guys love their family, love their children for real, love their wives, but they got real funky attitudes because they think they run everything. And that's not biblical. How do you offend what God pulled out of you? How would you treat yourself? Because actually she is yourself. So don't punch her, punch yourself in the face. See, I like challenging preaching because it's not a sermon until it creates tension. Because when men go to church, they got their best face on all the time. God bless you. Hello. But once they get home, give them 48 hours, right? They're going to cuss at somebody. They're going to hang up on their wife. They're going to yell. You don't know what you're talking about. Then they're going to come on Wednesday for 30 minutes with another clean face. Give them 24 hours. But every time Satan allows any of us who are close to anyone to speak while we're under the influence of pain, hurt, disgust, distrust, you are leaving a seed in someone that if you don't get to it fast enough, once it grows, you get what you produced. Oh yeah, come on, can I get help? This is not who they are. This is who you made them become. Because they were sweet till they met you. They were nice till they met you. They ain't never cussed till they met you. Had their first drink with you. They ain't never did certain things until you came along. And you made them do it because someone put the seed in. And now you want someone just like you. But do you actually want someone that is all of what you are? You cannot, am I boring you all? You cannot plant an apple tree and expect oranges to grow. Because some of y'all are funny. All men are men, all women are the same. Some of you are funny, but let me talk to educated people. All fruit ain't fruit. So when you say, I eat fruit, and we mention when you be like, nah, I don't eat that. All right, then you don't eat all fruit. All men are not the same. You just picking the same men. I can't, all women are not the same. You're just attracted to the same type of woman. That's because you're picking according to the seed that grew up in you.
Now, some of you need to talk to me because you're looking real mad. I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to boss you. But most of us that look real mad and want to fight, you even got to see the possibility of being gay. It's in you. So you mad when real men talk because they remind you what you aren't. And the woman in you that's hiding out, she getting offended every 30 seconds. When men say he should be a little nicer, what is wrong with you, brother? He could have said that a little better than that. Your parents didn't choose their words. Look at your neighbor, tell them, be careful with your words after today. Be careful with your words. I hang with people, they don't have to be saved. I don't have all saved friends and colleagues. I'm not a part of that generation that tried to make me stay away from everybody that ain't a Christian. I have secular friends. And sometimes these secular friends, they still respect me, but every now and then, I'm talking to healthy people, they cuss while talking, then they say, I'm sorry, pastor. I would be like, don't say sorry to me, Negro, you a cusser. I, I used to cuss like that. I'm not shocked. See, y'all kill me when y'all try to live double lives, but I don't know why. Now, y'all can't do that around Dr. Deborah. She's too apostolic. But the rest of my members, ain't nobody perfect in here. And most Christians that are holy, that don't cuss, they got nasty words. Their words are strong. Move, you stink. They just rude. I'd rather hear you cuss. Then for you to offend folk you don't know and don't know why they in the condition they in and hurt them so bad that they live with a poor taste for Jesus Christ because your tongue speaking is terrible when it's English. Don't speak in tongues to God and speak rude to me. How can you say you love a God who you have never seen? and hate your brother who you see every day. I'm almost done. Look at your neighbor one more time and tell him, watch your words. Let me be a psychologist for about two minutes because that is a part of my arsenal. Let me say this to five people who will slowly stand after you understand it. There are men, for real, who grew up not to cheat. Don't stand yet, Don, I know. There, there are men, that's one of my inner circle, he ain't lying. He, it, it, that, that are born to be gentlemen, that were created by their parents and grandparents to be mannerable too. All right, probably not some of these men that ain't clapping, but they were born to slide out chairs and open doors and... We were raised to say, yes ma'am, excuse me. Good night, you're quite, good morning. If any of you were raised that, that way back then, here goes the psychological twist and plot. And I'm asking healthy women who are serious to jump up. Because if a woman has been cheating on, cheated on by a man who was raised properly, you may not believe that the main reason is what I'm going to tell you now. You called him what he wasn't. You a cheater. Man ain't never cheat. But that seed done hit him. See, it got real quiet. You let the devil use your words.
to restructure your work. Look at the women that's mad. I don't believe it. That's because you said it. Then for the other healthy group of women, because there's a group of women that didn't stand at all, and I get it, you're still healing. But 10 of you catch this. You even chose who we cheated with. Look at her looking at you. We didn't even know that. Her in the orange. You be like, for real? We, we ain't that gangster. Look at the women still mad who got a new man but having a flashback of the cheating man because I'm talking about it. Hopefully, you don't speak the same way to your next one as you spoke to your last. Or you will get the same results. And then you'll start believing all men. Yep, I'm sorry, I just made one of my guests angry. She done looked on, she ain't never coming to hear me no more. That's because you came here with a fresh wound, but you came to be healed. You didn't come here to go home the same way you came. Let the words of my mouth, oh y'all, and the meditation before I speak, let me think about what I'm supposed to say. Because I need what I say to be acceptable. Oh Lord, my strength. The reason why most of you need strength for one loud screamer is you're becoming something you weren't ready to become. I can't believe I didn't slap her in the face. You need strength not to be what that negative energy or spirit is telling you to do because this is who I am. That's not who you are, any man, any anymore. If any man be in Christ, I can't get help. He or she is a new creature. All things must be passed away. I wish I had taught and behold all things. And for some of you who want to scream better for yourself, don't expect me to change right away. We die daily. Back in the day, my Uncle Vernon, he used to be so mad with driving when people would slow him down, he, he chased him with his car. That's road rage. Some of y'all have it, you don't chase the car, you just yell at them with the windows up. What you doing? The windows is up, huh? Some of you go and go around them the wrong way. Double yellow lines. Look at somebody, only those from the block will understand, tell them don't feed the beast. Hear me, don't feed the beast. We can tell who you are by the way you use your words. Whether you have them on a clergy collar or a dog collar, we can tell who you are by how you use your words. When you raise children right and they cry instead of expressing, a real parent says, stop crying, use your words. Express to me those emotions don't hold them in. Because if you do, they will grow one day. And that person might become a murderer because they've held things in for 20 years. I don't, I don't, let me confess something. I'm about to be blocked, but I don't just listen to gospel music. My church going to let me go down by myself, but I'm cool. My favorite music in the world is jazz. In the world. 
Cause gospel doesn't sound like gospel anymore, it sounds like hip hop and rap. When I grew up, James Cleveland was gospel, Shirley Caesar, gospel, Edwin Hawkins, gospel. Y'all don't want me to name. Daryl Coley, gospel. Thomas Whitfield, gospel. Benny Cummings, gospel. Institutional church, gospel. Timothy Wright, the concert choir, gospel. New York Community Choir, Benny Diggs, gospel. Clay Evans, gospel. And I can keep naming and keep naming, but I like jazz. But since I've been telling y'all to use your words, I keep hearing this r and song and I don't even know the words. So I don't know if this is the devil or God. But when I can't shake it, it's normally the Lord speaking to me. But some of you are gonna live better lives if you love somebody and instead of arguing and using your quietness to express yourself, after tonight you need to tell them, come and talk to me. I, you need to use your word. Because I really want to know you. I really want, I really want, I, I, I just, I want to know you. Uh, 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 uh. All right, back to the text. Look at your neighbor and tell them again, learn to use your word. Matthew 21, I am three quarters done. Matthew 21, verse 21 and 22. If I've helped anyone up, up until this point, shout yes. All right, that's not enough, so let me work harder. Matthew 21, verse 21 and 22. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do which is done to the fig tree, but also if you say, y'all hear, unto this mountain. It's time for some of y'all to speak to something big. Oh, y'all didn't care. Look at somebody and tell them, you gotta talk to something big. Stop letting people talk to you that are not on your level to even be spoken to. You wasting words. I can't get, when, when everyone that gets on your nerve makes you speak down, you're wasting energy. You shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and it shall be done. Based on how you use your words, the biggest distraction in your life will be removed. You don't have to fight it. You ain't got to get vengeance. All you have to do is learn how to speak to the future and the past will get out of your way. Tell somebody I need that technique in my life. And then it goes on to enter a realm of prayer. Prayer is a two-way communication between God and men. It is God seating into you, you seating back into God. 22 says, and all things, what did I say? Whatsoever ye ask in prayer, keep on believing it. Even though it doesn't look like it's going to happen, look at your neighbor, use your words, and tell them keep on believing it. Why? Because seeds don't grow overnight. If I give this process and tell you don't jump, I fail. You got to let what you planted die. You call it germination. Yeah. So when the thing looks like it's dead, that's the process. But you got to speak to a dead thing. Y'all ain't talking. And tell that dead thing, my seed shall not fall to the ground. Oh, I'm going to church. Don't let the soup fool you. My seed is not going to the ground and dying. 
Now, now, what the scripture say, Father Hope? You know the high Bible. You know the entire Bible. Let's a seed falls and dies. It abides alone. When you say plant seed, another term for it for a rich woman who is green is bury it. Another Christian word for it is sow it. I think I just lost everybody. Sowing and burial are one in the same. So when God tells you to sow your time, your talent, your money, your tithe, your portion, yourself, your mind, your words, am I teaching? Elder, help me back there, Mary, because I'm coming. Then, then ten of you ought to catch this. When it says so that, it means whatever you do, it almost kills you to do it. Especially when you're doing it for folk that don't value it, appreciate it, say thank you, and God says do it again. Some of you won't talk to me because you get hurt, but some of you hang by yourself because you had no seeds for other people. So you abide alone. You wouldn't know what to say to who you talk about. Now when you find out that you were wrong, you don't even know how to go back and give a proper apology. And it's not in words, it's in full dialogue. I thought because and I was wrong, not just I just want to apologize, you don't have to know what it's for, but I'm sorry. That ain't no apology. Oh, I can't get help. A real woman that's smart would ask a man, what you saying sorry for? I don't want to get into it. No, no. It's not authentic if you can't reverse words with words. I'm sorry simply means something I took and said that I shouldn't. I'm trying to reverse it and get us back to a healthy place. I'm gonna leave y'all alone because you're making me a little disturbed. When I'm telling you, you got to believe after so that while the thing is getting worse, that seed will turn out like God said it would. And the way that seed grows from one screamer is you got to hang around folk that water it. Not that makes you question it. Stay away from gossipers and naysayers and people that don't have positivity. You must avoid them at any cost. You weren't raised right. If you don't have something good to say about somebody, don't say nothing at all. Especially if you're not doing anything for them. So it says, if you want the mountains removed, cast into seas, big things to get out of your way, no limits, no boundaries, I see increase all around me, transform, enlarge my territory. If you want the lyrics of that song to come to pass, you have to know what to say to God. And those words are seeds. And if those words are not right when you say it to him, he will give you the productivity of the seed that you sow. So if you know you're going to want that man back, don't ruin him and leave now and then think two months later he's going to call or vice versa, versa vice. Because if those words were strong, they're not coming back. And I didn't mean it will not help you at that time. Sending texts, y'all don't hear me? Texting or sexting, none of that will work. They've got those pictures already. None of the repeats will work. Look how y'all got quiet. I told you, don't make him come out now. Well, I know he like this. It ain't what he like no more. Your words are stronger than what you've done.
The only reason why I'm not with a certain person or that relationship has been restored and it could have been for years. The only reason why I'm not there and that's where I would have wanted to be because no real man wants to fail in anything that deals with his family if he's healthy. The only reason why I'm not there is not because of cheating or anything, but I was not able to get over my part. I was not able to get over a woman telling me I'll never be nothing. Those words, see y'all are quiet. Now I preach for the women, why y'all won't let us get here? I had a stroke, I couldn't respond, I'm walking with a limp and all. I guess she thought I was deaf, cause when you're stroked up, I think they think you're hearing gone, cause you can't talk. He ain't gonna never be nothing. And she was right, listen, as my seed took 11 years to germinate. Everybody missed it. To where I thought she was right. I was like, maybe I'm cursed. Good God, is this witchcraft? Have you ever looked at yourself and know you're doing better but things ain't getting better and it made you question yourself? Like, what is really? I can't get no help. Like, what's really wrong with me? For 11 years, Bishop, she looked right. But on the 11th year and, and a day, a blade of grass. And I started taking that blade of grass to people who knew how to water it. Five years after that, which makes 16 years, I started growing, started becoming somewhat known, influential, global prophet, educated, started getting my first house here in Florida. Then I got a call, do you believe in reconciliation? I do! See, I'm being so real to help you be real to where y'all leaving me on Fantasy Island. But if you know I'm a real prophet, you know why I'm preaching like this, because I could basically not preach it and call you out one by one and tell your business. With the name, the room number, the city. Now I'm a bad mother, shut your mouth. Now I'm telling you. But I try not to get my church hooked on that kind of gift. Now I ain't going down by myself. And I know I ain't the only one that had to tur take a personal introspection of himself and said, did I do that much that it turned out like this? Eleven years, no production. Five years later, blade of grass, people watered it, began to succeed in life. And something in me, y'all ain't gonna preach me, wanted to go back, but I'm not sure if I wanted to go back for the family or just to say, ha ha, I made it. I lean more to the ha ha. And the reason why I take that route for one screamer is that means you still have some growing to do. Five years later, I had to send her money. She didn't have no court orders. I did it out of my heart. Here go 10 grand, here go five grand. Look at women. I wish I had an ex like that and I'd be okay too. Because I was trying to show myself that I'm a tool. That you can still help who tried to assassinate you. And if you scream on this, you gonna catch it. Cause who did you wrong, there's still grass while you a tree. Now I... We're in the same area, but I need more space. Trees don't hang out with grass. They just so happen to share the same space. You don't see grass with fruit. If 
the people that remain grass when you used to be a seed and you outgrew them come back in your life and still try to bring you all type of negativity. I want 10 folk to jump. You tell them, for you to talk to me, you gotta climb this tree. Cause my fruit ain't at the bottom. Y'all ain't talking all my fruit. God does not allow people at the bottom to reach your productivity easily. And ye shall be like the grass. Give me 15 minutes. God bless you. Luke 8 verse 11. Luke 8 verse 11. My technician back there knows the Bible. I'm so glad. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. I don't have no more scripture right here. Now the parable I feel preaching is this. The seed is the word of God. Mm. Look at somebody saying, mm. So most folk that have a lot to say is because they don't know enough scripture to know what to say. Look up. So they tell, this is how I feel because you don't know what God says. It's not what you would do. What would Jesus do? Y'all not. what would Jesus say? If he was in the same predicament, what would be his response? Why is yours so different from the word of God. Three of you should jump on this and encourage me. You will definitely, if you heard this sermon today, at least you'll be able to talk to somebody about it because the seed is going with you. And the part you can't explain, you're gonna be like, go on Facebook and go to the church page and finish watching the rest. But let me tell you this, I'm speaking to my mountain. And I'm telling you, get to step in. You're too big for me. You're too troublesome for me. You're too disturbing for me. The seed is the word of God. I want to give this a topic. Then I need just the 10 minutes. I asked for 15. Look at your neighbor and tell them my topic. Tell them your wish is my command. Just tell them that. I want to preach, but y'all don't want me to. But look at somebody and tell them, your wish is my command. Let me read this, go through three scripture type of examples. On first Sunday, I don't want some of y'all to dress so good that you can't talk, okay? I want y'all to dress where you can still talk. So once you get to the place where you're so, don't put that on. Listen to me well. There are those who are tempting to use God as if he is a genie in a bottle. I want to clear this now for those who are mature and know the scripture who will scream. God does not work for us. The Bible said command the blessing. It don't say command God. It said command the blessing. Not the blesser. You don't get to talk to God any old kind of way. Well, he knows me. He knows just how he made me. No, no, no. No, you don't get to talk to your parents any old kind of way. And they birthed you. They say, express yourself. Then, then when you get to a certain level, they say, now be careful. I wish I had parents. They said, lower that tone. Fix your face. Why your chest so popped up? Deflate. Take that bass out your voice. Straighten up. Then they say, now go ahead.
I lost my young adults on that one. They go around certain Christians that don't go to church enough, that don't have enough seed to know God. They go around making wishes. And then they try to find a scripture to activate the wish. And the scripture they're using, y'all need to, is pulled out of context. So you try to hold God to his word, but the word you're holding him to has nothing to do with the wish that you made. All right, I need my scriptures to go on because now I got to take them to school like I went. Third John, old school say three John. Three John, third John chapter one, verse two only. Verse two only. Put it on screen. Let me do some work. Am I boring some of you? Because ain't no real restaurants open to full. Beloved. Come on, let me, let me show you the scriptures that you use. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Come on, and be in health. Even as your soul prospers. So a certain group of people called the word of faith people, they say God wants everybody to prosper. But that's not what it says. You take this, don't look strange, look like you're learning. You take this and want to apply it to your broke season and tell God, make me prosper, make me healthy. But you forgot you had a responsibility to that prosperity and your health. Your soul had to prosper. Your soul can't prosper if you ain't under preaching and teaching in the sanctuary where the word is being taught. The soul must be fed. See, can't get help. And if you can feed your own soul, heal your own body. Paul's wish was in the eight clause. Above all things, he'd probably be in health. The responsibility said even as. Well, I think I need to go further for those who claim I went to seminary in school of divinity. I have a little paper, but as I teach, I see you're lying. I know you're lying. You got that from your church for free. But let me help you. Let me help five people. Number one, you and I cannot use this scripture and apply it to becoming millionaires if this scripture actually is not referring to us. The reference scripture is in verse one. Go back. See, y'all go looking for verses. To the elder, unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Go to the next verse. Beloved, he's talking to Gaius. You're going through hell because I'm in jail. You're covering the ministry for me. They're taking you through hell, but I need you to keep preaching. But I wish above all, you follow? He's telling Gaius, be encouraged because the word wish in Greek means pray. He says, I'm going to keep knocking on God's door until whatever hell you are experiencing stops. But I need you to believe in the word that I said to you. Now that's how it's properly preached. You need someone who cares about you enough to take your cause to God when you're giving up. Somebody that says, you human, go through what you're going through, but I'm going to have a little talk with Jesus. And they keep knocking. And when God hears me come to him for you, I hope somebody screams, because you came to them about them and not yourself, I will tell the person that's concerned about others your wish. Oh, yeah. All you need to get God to do it is ask God to do it for somebody else, which is called sowing.
you got to be old school. Had me on their mind. Took some time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. Y'all don't remember the song? My mama prayed for me. My grandma prayed for me. Then he said, I wish above all these things, all things, all the hell you're going through, all the experiences you're having, that you will prosper, be in health. I'm hoping that whatever you're doing doesn't kill you and take all your money. But the most important part is not the money or your health right now, it's your soul. wonder what verse 3 would say. For I, Paul, rejoiced greatly that when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, they talked about the seed that's in you. which means you ain't just talking it. When you encourage somebody, you give them a testimony. You ain't the only one that's been broke. You ain't the only one that's been betrayed. Well, how you look so good? Because I trust in the word of God. And one thing God cannot do, baby, God is not a man. That he should lie, nor is he the son of man. He should repent. Next time I go that high, I ain't coming down. But I got to give you one more scripture. Because all of you are not going to be millionaires, but there are a few seeds in here that will. And if you knew it was you, you'd have popped up. That's called germinate. See, it's called sprout. See, some of you hear it, but you can't feel it because you don't receive it as good soil. But when I'm in a service and a preacher, male or female, says something out the word and I'm going through something from the world, I respond to let the devil know I got that seed. Then you get mad. You got another new car? You ain't got one yet. Don't get mad with me. All right, uh, soon to be Deacon Gums in the future. Let me say something to ten of y'all on this side. Fruits have seed in them of themselves. But there is a fruit different than any other fruit in the world. I'm going to see who's with me. Is why I said few of you will become millionaires, about five or six of you because you're not a watermelon with a lot of seeds, you're not a cantaloupe, you are a strawberry. Strawberry people intimidate normal people because they wear their seeds on the outside. Hold up, hold up, wait a minute. Let, they don't have to be cut for you to see it. Some folk are jealous of you that don't know you because you have much seed. Everybody don't have to go to, through hell to learn the lesson. Some of us just want to know what do I have to do? Just point me in the right direction. Stay away from him. Why? If you got to be told why, go on through. Watermelons have seeds, cantaloupes, hundreds of seeds, but that strawberry, that little, all them little white dots, yellow, those seeds. And if one person yell for real and scream, you'll be blessed. How do you eat the watermelon, I mean the strawberry, without eating the seed? Because some of you are about to come into a season where you can have your cake. I 
need a car, but I want a truck. See, you can put your wish on top of your need. Philippians 4 and 19, then I'm a holler and we're going home. Philippians 4 and 19, Father, hope I want to hear from you sometime later today about my sermon. But my God! Oh, y'all love this. You ain't going to like it after this, though. But I just saw my nephew and great nephew walk in the door. My God! Shall supply. Some. All your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And the church uses this and abuses this scripture. You and I have also. We've abused this scripture and people have gotten very despondent and discouraged because this scripture never really worked because you, were, because you detached it from its context. I'm gonna say this for the last time and see who scream. In order for you to know what's going on in your life, you may have to go backwards. Take me back to verse 18. Let me read my scriptures backwards. Paul said, I have both learned how to abound. I am full. Having received, y'all ain't gonna catch it, of Epaphrodites, the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. Don't go nowhere. Paul just admits that the reason why I'm gonna go to God and make a wish for you is your love to bless me has returned. Now stop. No, no, you can't use this if you ain't sowing into somebody. You can't use this. You cannot use this. You've disarmed the context. Young men, y'all talk to me who be preaching in our churches. I have all and I abound. I've learned how to live victorious in both. I'm full. I have received of Epaphrodites the things which were sent from you an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God, which meant God is pleased with what you sow. And because you bless me, I have the right to go to him. Oh, y'all, and tell him I have a wish. Oh, y'all, and the wish is not for me. The wish is for those who have sown into me. Yep, some of y'all quiet. You that ain't screaming, don't you ever pastor. You're going to have to broke this church in life. You better keep your job. I'm reading the scriptures backwards. Let's go backwards. Let's go to 17 in case 17 saying something that 18 didn't say. Not because I need your money. Look how quiet it got now. I came here with a bit. Here living in my zip code. I preach without a sound. Oh no, y'all didn't do this for me. Not that I desired a gift, but I desired your meant fruit. Maybe y'all forgot that word. That may have bound to your account. So when you sow into good ground, heaven opens up a bank account that says what they can't pay financially, I miraculously eradicate and dismiss. I work for those who make my work easy. Maybe that verse didn't bless you, so let's go backwards. I'm almost done, I promise you. For even in Thessalonica, you only sent one time and again unto my necessity. You stopped. You didn't get it back to verse 18. Something between 16 
and 19 made you stop giving. Oh, I don't hear about you did it once and maybe twice. Now, please let me give a disclaimer. This is not to make y'all start giving me your money. I just left the bank setting up my life policy. I'm good. What you give me is only going to help you. It ain't going to help me. If I didn't pass the don't get married, my kids are grown, I could live for the rest of my life till I die. See that? But I can't do it because some of my life keeps me sowing into other people's lives. But if I was selfish, seedless, GMO, if I was a genetically modified pastor, <laughs> look, you did it once or twice. Maybe they didn't like that. Because there's folk who have given one time in here and act like... <laughs> There are folk who pay their tithe, and that tithe ain't over $25 a week, right? And they be like, I can't pay tithe this week. Something wrong, you ate lunch this week? Wait, no, don't feel bad, feel blessed. Go backwards. I'm almost there, I'm working it back. Now ye Philippians know also, I'm gonna see the screen, that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church, Communicated with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. I blessed folk all over the world, and you were the only ones to sow. Philippians did that. They were the only ones, then later on, they stopped giving. Because their issue was for screaming mothers and deacons who won't talk to me, why should I give to a man that's never getting out of jail? Why wouldn't you want his stay in bondage? Why not put money on his books? To make sure that even in, see y'all quiet now, I see a lot. Cause Paul is attributed to three quarters of the New Testament and everything he wrote is what we trying to live and we reading it, quoting it, trying to get what's in it from a man that's in jail. How you get blessed with somebody and then dog them out? I don't understand how y'all do that. No church, look what it said, no church communicated with me as concerning giving. Oh, they wanted prophecy, they wanted to be healed, they wanted this, but none of them discussed compensation. But the church at Philippi. Now, that ain't good enough verse, I'm getting off that. Go back to one more verse. What about Notwithstanding, ye have done what? Ye have well done that you communicated with my affliction. Wait a minute, because I see some folk over here taking naps and things and yawning because you no longer want seed, which is going to ruin your wishes. Watch this, then you can talk to me in the office. One person catch this. After this verse, we're going backwards. The verse I'm going to read now is the one you all use, and now you know you can't use it at all because you can't use it until you attach verse 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So the verse before it is your favorite verse. Go to the one before that. I can do it. Hold on. This ain't the church talking to Paul. This is Paul telling them, if you don't take care of me at all, because of the seeds that I've sown in other people, I can do all things through Christ. Now let's read it forward in the Message Bible from verse 13 to 19. We can start at 10. Let me let you hear it, and those who respond, Lord, start miraculously paying their debts. Miraculously. No, no, Lord, you know who just screamed in the screen. I'm talking about your real group. I'm glad in God for happier than you would ever guess. Happy 
that you again are showing such strong concern for me. Mm. Not that you ever quit praying or thinking about me. You just never gave. You had no chance to show it. Actually, I wish I had help. I don't have a sense of needing anything personally. I've learned by now to be quite content whatever my circumstance. I wish I had grown up. I'm just as happy with little as with much. With much as with little. I found the recipe they have for being happy, whether full or hungry, hands full, hands empty. Whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything. The one who makes me who I am. I don't mean that your help didn't mean a lot to me. It did. It was a beautiful thing that you came along me, alongside me in my troubles. I want to keep reading. You Philippians, not Shabbat, you Philippians, well no, and you can be sure, I'll never forget it, that when I first left Macedonia's province venturing out with, with God's message, not one church helped me out in the give and take, y'all don't hear me, in the give and take of this work, except you. You were the only one. I wish, I wish people would talk who might feel a little convicted. Even while I was in Thessalonica, you helped me out. And not only once, but twice. Not that I'm looking for handouts, but I do want you to experience the blessings. Two more verses, then I'm about to close it. And now I have it all. I keep getting more. The gifts you sent me through Epaphrodites were more than enough, like a sweet smelling sacrifice roasting on an altar, filling the air with fragrance, pleasing God to no end. God, let me tell y'all what I wrote on my notes because I ain't been able to go back to it and 50 people jump and tell it. When you give, bless people with words, seed, time, whatever, and you mean it from your heart, God smells you. And you that don't give, you stink. You that don't sow, you stink. God makes sure that the word sweet smelling is attached. Some of you are just smelling, but this is sweet. Sweet smelling, roasting on the altar, filling the air with fragrance. Please God, no end. Pleasing God with to, to basically no end. You can be sure that God will take care of everything you need. His generosity exceeding yours, which means he has nothing for you until you have something for somebody else. I wish I had preached to His generosity. That's going to pour out to you from Jesus. Our God and Father abounds in glory that just pours out into no an eternity, then he says, yes. I'm about to close, because they wasted all of my good preaching. But I've got, I have two stories. One story is about a boy, it's a fictitious movie they had on the screen a few years ago and that I heard when I was a baby. It was called, I'm gonna see who gets death free, Aladdin's Lamp. Now before I talk about Aladdin, 
let me introduce the lamb for 10 screamers. That word is a lamb. I'm almost unto my feet. Come on, stay with me. And a light unto my path. I quote it again, Bishop. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And a laka sombra, and a light. I'm sorry, Avna. And a light unto my path. The seed is the word of God. And the word of God is a lamp. In this story, because y'all didn't catch it, neither did Dr. Mixon, but in the story, Aladdin is told about a mountain that's housing precious jewels. His mission is to find out how to get that jewels out of the mountain. If you saw things, he tried so many ways. But the only way he got in there for people is he had to speak to them. There's some biblical context to this movie. And he said three words for screaming. He said, open sets me. He spoke to his mountain. The Makolan, the mountain, opened up to him. He used his words and he walks in and he sees all shiny substances with value, sapphire, onyx, rubies, diamonds, pearls. I'm sorry, Elder Kevin, if I'm boring you. And with all that he saw, looked over in the corner with no bling bling and no shine and saw a rusty, dusty lamp. He could only take one thing out of the mountain. And he had to choose well. He didn't take a diamond. He didn't take a ruby, a sapphire, an onyx. He didn't take a barrel or a pearl. Something in him was attracted to this rusty, dusty lamp. He grabbed a hold of his lamp, took his lamp home, told his mama the story that she didn't believe. Mama, today, I spoke to the mountain. Mama said, go on the land. The mountain opened to me and mama, there was all precious jewels. And I brought some home as a result of being in a wealthy place. She probably said, Aladdin, is this gonna get us out the hood? He said, I ain't sure. Mama, there were some things in there that could have gotten us out. But I was only able to take one thing. Mama said, little lad, what was in there? He said, sapphire. Rubies, diamonds, onyx, barrels, onyx. She said, did you bring your mama one of those home? He said, mama, I told you, I'm almost there, that I could only bring one thing out. She said, Aladdin, what did you bring out? He turned around and pulled from behind his back his treasure. He showed his mama and his mama did not get excited because the other things he mentioned had more value than what he took. 
He didn't even know. Be careful how this lamp works. Sometimes we read scriptures in the Bible, but we're not sure how to get them to work. But look at somebody and tell them it's going to work between now and the next 48 hours. Aladdin gets a little discouraged. And while he's being discouraged by his familia, because he didn't bring home what they thought he should bring. And um, he took his lamp and went into his bedroom. He took his lamp, went on in to his little private space. He was a little discouraged because all of us want somebody to believe for us. You ought to grab somebody's hand today and tell them if any two of us, you found the wrong person already, if any two of us touch and agree, on anything God said we shall have it because where two or three are gathered together in my name are touching and agreeing God said I'll be in the midst of them shake somebody's hand uh, give me a little gain out here and say neighbor God's about to take your order tell them you're gonna get blessed as soon as you tell God to bless me don't ask God about yourself but take me to the Lord and cry Lord here is my brother here is my sister here is my mother y'all gonna help me preach or get out the camera here is my father today is not me standing but I'm my brother's keeper and if you do it for my brother Just a little while longer. Grab another neighbor's hand and tell your neighbor, hold on. Just a little while longer. Tell your neighbor everything is going to be all right. If that person does not believe you, push them away from you now and tell them you mistreated me one time and I don't need your money I don't need you to co-sign all I want you to do is talk to God on my behalf tell 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 the Lord to heal me to revive me tell the Lord to replenish me grab a neighbor and tell your neighbor in 48 hours God's gonna make you a tree you're gonna have fruit to live off of the rest of your life but why have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. He'll hear our faithful cry and he'll answer by and by. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, I, I've got three words to tell you. And when I say these three words, 
if you don't get excited. You stay grass while I grow into a tree. The three words are paid in full. Paid in full. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lord. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Uh, you need to grab somebody else's hand and make that your permanent.
dust, he dust the lamp, a vapor that we call Shekinah glory, a smoke, a mist comes out of the lamp. I'm telling you, this story is from the Bible. The mist comes out and the voice speaks from the lamp. Young master, your wish. He wished for nothing for himself. All his wishes went outside of him. But about time he finished the third one, he was the richest person. Because he did what Solomon did. He asked nothing for himself. Oh yeah, but he asked, God bless everybody around me. And if I get about 30 people to actually turn around with your hands up and point in all directions and say bless them in 48 hours, God's gonna bless you. Bless my brother! Every one of you that are watching, be blessed! because God gave you a gift to dance, you can dance. But all of you that need God to do something strictly for you, I want you to make sure that dance is unselfish. You're gonna dance for another person and you're gonna put their need ahead of yours. When you do it, God said, I'll show you who I am in 48 hours. You got one minute to find somebody to dance for. <laughs>
do me a favor. No more dancing for some of you. All of you that know you've got seed in you, one day use a portion of it to help someone. But to the 10 millionaires that I know are present, for future presents, soon to be, I want you to be the only strawberry dancing in this building. And when you dance, know this, God does not have to cut you to get to your seed. He's just gonna let you have your cake and eat it too. You got 30 seconds, strawberry. 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 I got some young adults that know what kind of fruit they are. Praise the boy. You have 
48 hours before my Wednesday Bible study. I expect to see results. Oh, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. I expect her to be old. I expect to see something tangible. Something that is a matter of fact. Something that you can tell the devil God is still real. I bind every spirit of witchcraft in this church today. Your spirit is bound and it is now no power, not valid. Only them that will make it are those who believe in the Holy Ghost today. And it is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Say of the Lord, you're holding the hand of a person who's about to become full of seed. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Let me have a few of my elders that are vibrant enough to come. Keep worshiping, hold hands. You that need a church home. Let me admit to you, we are very unorthodox. I'm proud of it. We organically grow here. Close that back door as quick as possible. But this is the chance I told you over an hour ago that you would need to be properly connected somewhere. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to know everything. Let the process take its course. And because I am the bishop, I am the pastor, and I do not open the doors often at all. I'm going to open the doors of this church for one minute. If you need a church home, you want to grow right, you want to be taught, you can take rebuke as well. You understand order and accountability. Come out of your seat and meet us at the altar. Our church is your church. I see some people and I don't hear my church. I see some. I don't hear nobody. I bind that spirit of witchcraft right now. Seem like most of our visitors are no longer going to be visitors. I see men with their sons. This blesses me more than anything. More than anything. I know some of you are potential prophets and preachers. I can see the mark on you. I can tell that some of you have gone through relational issues where you were done wrong, but you are climbing out of a pit. I can tell some of you, your baby's daddy will never do right. One might be incarcerated, but you and the child will be okay. I can tell all of this as I stand here in your presence. 
But I need you to not be like most church folk. They join today and you don't see them for a month. You need to be present. I have never said this to my members. I need you to try to carve out time on Wednesday to learn the word. Don't be like others who could be here, but they always watch online. I want you in a seat because nothing is better than going to the class, meeting the teacher, feeling the atmosphere. If you can't, then the secondary way to stay connected is online as our online members, e-members have just joined in the literal sanctuary to be a part of their church. All the way, y'all ain't talking to me, from their different locations. Last thing I want to say, then we're going to pray. This church is not perfect. We've got gossipers here. Look at me. They, they are here. They're not, they're in every row. We got liars here. We got men that's going to try to hit on y'all. They're here. Married and unmarried. We've got people undercover that's going to try to put you in their group. They're here. My protection device is if anyone does that to you and you don't feel comfortable, report to me. Don't leave and go somewhere. Don't let them chase you away from your home. We are better at putting them out than letting you leave. I've been waiting to put out some people, but nobody's snitching. I've been waiting to put some people out so I could show them how serious I am. I want you to know you're protected from leadership. You're protected by these. None of us will be calling your number to give your prophecy, not from my church. But if they have one and the Lord is moving, they will refer and we will release. We want to be a ministry that functions properly and in order so that you never have to say, so-and-so called me and said, Bishop said, if they put my name on it, reach me. Because I barely talk to anybody in here. Not like that. I've been out to eat with only 12 people max in my church. All right? So you prophets, prophetess, when you were dancing, so many things opened up for you. So many things. You're going to get a fresh start in about two weeks. In about two weeks. I don't hear a hallelujah in here. Do you two know each other? That's your little sister? All right, I don't know, and are y'all friends? Are y'all close? I need y'all to get close and don't fight because the younger one's about to get an apartment. Now, I don't know how this gonna work. It should have been you, but God wants to show you, pray for your little sister, and what I do for her, I do double for you. So somebody ought to say hallelujah. You're about to be properly covered. You're gonna start a whole new life. You're gonna be fine. Are y'all... Jealous or y'all happy? Let them hug. That's family. Let them hug. If I can ever, in the future, because I'm a little busy, get a chance to help you nurture your gift, your prophetic, along with your businesses, you're going to be so wealthy that I'm not going to have to worry about them paying tithe. I'm going to be looking to my Epaphrodites. This man, watch what I tell you. If he stays, he's about to become Epaphrodites of your family, of them that don't live in the state. Y'all ain't talking to me. Of your pastor. God says, tell him, I'm going to put him on big stages to say some great things. So tell him, rehearse, rewrite, regurgitate. That's what I hear. Rehearse, rewrite, regurgitate. I won't remember this after church, so don't be like, Bishop, what were they? You gotta look at the tape. Rehearse, rewrite, because God's gonna have you standing on prominent stages, winning over business people for Christ while you're making money hand over fist, and somebody ought to shout hallelujah. I want God to give you a four-bedroom home, but he wants to repeat three. I don't know why. But the Lord said, tell him, because he came as a man, whatever he says out of his mouth in 48 hours is what I'm going to do for him and his family. And the Lord says, no past addictions, no past accusations. Hiya! God, uh -oh, I,
Your family is going to be the pure definition of what restoration looks like. May I ask where you're from? Because I have one more thing to say. Oh, from Ch Ch Chicago. And who's the lady? Need to tell you something. <clears throat> and I want you to hear me closely. Because I'm going to call her, I know what you called her, but I'm going to call her your fiance. For some reason. When did y'all get married? 2009. God is going to redo the entire marriage because of her. Y'all were at a breaking point, but God said, I got her right where she needs to be right now. All right. And she was full, she was empty until she would hear from God. This was a service for her. Two, I don't know what you know about church. She's a prophetess. You can never lie to her again because she knows it before you say it. You got to trust the God in your wife. Because God says you're going to make triple the money you used to make. You're going to see God in action. And somebody with a loud mouth shout yes. All right, hold hands. I didn't bring y'all up here to prophesy, but every now and then it happens. Every now and then it happens. Uh, what kind of business you in? No, this one. Um, I'm going to put you in the business. Listen to this. Because everything you seem to touch, you can do well, but you never do it long. You give up too easy. Because she said, I do. Because it doesn't flip money like you want it to. Fast enough, you're going to the next thing. Then God said, I'm tired of changing her address. Tell her, I'm not changing her address no more. I'm about to give her a business that she can work from her house and make more money in her house than she could do traveling. And somebody with a loud mouth ought to shout yes. Now, Pasha, I don't get in your business, but this is one you need. You got two more you need to fire, but that's one you need. She needed to give her life back to God first. Y'all ain't her all the way. She might even help you stay close to God. You're holding hands. I want to say this to you, but one day we'll have to talk. Yeah, you. What's your name? I want to say this to you, and one day we'll have to talk, because you're still in the process of recovery. But the Lord said, tell her, I made her, and I know that love can be better the second time around. The Lord said, I made her, and I'm tired of her telling me what she don't want, she threw. Tell her, stop talking to me until she hears from me. You came this morning because you needed to hear from God. You came believing if he's a prophet, Lord, just let me hear something. So I'm telling you that God says, tell you 2025, the end towards the end, all the way through 2029 will be the best years of your life. And God says, tell her for all the hell she went through from 2008 till now, tell her I erase it in Jesus name. And somebody with a loud mouth ought to help Kimberly. All right, new brothers and sisters, y'all holding each other's hands or touching the arm. I'm going to have my elders quickly, when I tell them, come lay hands on you after I've said this prayer, then you will face the audience and a few of your new brothers. Wait a minute, there's two more. Somebody's fighting to join here because you trying to go past the church? That's, that's why you ain't joining here? You think God called you to bypass here to go past her? You got one last shot. I'm just trying to help whoever it is. All right, hold hands. Hold hands. Heads bowed, eyes closed. After I pray, they will lay hands. Keep your eyes closed. Y'all will pray quickly. Just anoint them with your touch. Hallelujah. 
And then you will turn around and be loved on by these people. If God should speak to me again, trust me, I will find you because now you're a member. I know how to reach you. Father God, we do thank you for this gathering, this healthy group of people. Lord, I believe you sent them here not just to be blessed, but to be a blessing. God, I need you to repair, restructure every last one of their lives. Do it for their children. Do it for their sanity. Do it for their soul. Now, God, I'm asking you, as Paul prayed for Gaius, I pray for these. I wish, above all, that they would prosper, be in health, even as their souls shall prosper. And God, give them the keen desires of their heart. Keep the wicked one away from them. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I wish I had praying mothers. The blood of Jesus be against every attack that you think you will bring against these God's children. Now God sanction them, save them. If not, fill them with the Holy Ghost. That with a mighty burning fire. Give them a love for the word. And a love for people who don't know how to love. Now let the words of my mouth, meditation, go lay hands of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. Y'all can lay hands. Oh Lord, you are our strength and our redeemer. The rest of you clap for them as they're being prayed for in Jesus' name. Y'all remember that Father Hope always has seniority over all. My new sons and daughters and children of God, face your new church members. Turn around the opposite way. You that will do it quickly, come love on them in Jesus' name. Play something nice. Church, come love on them now in Jesus' name. Some people ought to go where everybody knows their name. And you're always glad they came. Cause you ought to go where people see trouble all the same. You ought to go where everybody knows your name. Cause Lamar used to play it. And young B ought to be able to pick it right up. Some people ought to go where everybody knows their name. And they always glad they came. That's how we started our church. Cause you ought to go where people see trouble all the same. You ought to go where everybody knows your name. That's beautiful. Boy, that's a lot of love today. You want to go where people see trouble on all the same. You want to go where everybody knows. So when y'all get out of church, go to YouTube. That's on the TV. Learn it, play it, it's cheers. It's their opening song. That'll be our membership song.
All right, y'all hug them. Don't try to make friends and get you some members. Hug them and keep on walking. No phone numbers, no nothing. Everyone standing. I ain't never seen all my members want to hook somebody. This something new right here, boy. That's a lot of love y'all get. Everyone standing, want my deacons to bring the offering baskets, the reciprocals, receptacles. Oh, you wanna go where people see trouble all the same. You wanna go where everybody knows your name. Oh, oh, oh. And you'll always glad they came You ought to go where people see Trouble are all the same You ought to go where everybody knows your name You gotta wait till they finish some. Somebody, softly, somebody gave a seed this morning and just reported that before they left, it came back good time before they left out of here. I'm going to ask on first Sunday that I get at least 30 of us to sow $100 quick today. First Sunday is the day I challenge everyone. There are two or three of us who could sow 500 if you were serious about seeding and become Epaphrodites. And we don't give in our seats in this church. We give by moving. If you're sowing your 100, if you're sowing your 500, that would be a blessing to you. Even though it would help me, it would bless you. You that are watching online, feel free to join in and do the same. Thank you, Howie. Thank you, Elder. Uh, to the both elders. Thank you, woman of God, Pastor. I'm waiting on y'all. Um, Elder, Elder Jackson who was Deacon Jackson, says we're giving six. We're giving the five plus the one. Can y'all clap for them? That's what we need. Thank you, Abby.
No, no, this is actually what we need. People like them who understand that after you hear a word preached like that, you ought to activate yourself and see if that 48 hour thing start working in your favor. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm gonna give you all one more minute. This girl look like she rich. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> go ahead, baby. I'm gonna give the other six people who were wrestling less than 30 seconds. We don't curse nobody for not giving, but we bless everybody who does. Can I get a witness? This church ain't cursing nobody. We're not, we are not entertaining those kind of spirits. You go to hell, you went because you went. We didn't send you. You went on your own. We didn't send you. I think we're praying, praying for two teams today. Who played today? That's why you gave that $600. I get it. Eagles play. And the Ravens, which is senior father's team. All right, everyone else that has not given 100, bring your best now. Come because you were prepared. Don't come if you had to get ready. You got to learn how this works. We're in this series for a reason, but we've not talked about money yet, but we're in this series for a reason. Daria, I enjoy what I saw on Facebook with that marriage thing. You're making it real special at that house. That was I, all her. Oh, that was all her? I should have figured that, but I gave you credit. You that have businesses and everything, you got to start paying tithe from your entire business. You got to stop. You got to stop stealing. Stop stealing from God. You should pay tithe every week because there's no way you're eating, paying your mortgage, and not making some money somewhere. My son Rob, Wave Rob, I ain't going to bother him. That boy been paying tithe for a while secretly. And God done opened so many doors for that fella. It's remarkable. Somebody ought to clap. It's remarkable. Look at somebody and tell them, always give God what's his. Always. Always. Sister White, good to see you. It's always good to give God what's his. That's a sharp hairstyle. You go ahead. You knew it was you, huh? <laughs> You go right ahead. Has everyone given? I want y'all to watch those that are around me, Elder Curry, not you, but watch those around me that serve me and everything. During often, if they don't give on first Sundays $100, I'm going to sit them down because you cannot serve up and give down. Somebody said, you just can't do it. Something's wrong. And I can't let you serve. I cannot. My conscience, my conscience will not allow me to let you do that. If you eat, pay gas, you save an offering for the Lord when you're serving at the top. Can I get a witness? Or we'll have you serve somewhere else. Just don't serve me and can't reflect my giving. All right? It's just not good. It's not good. It doesn't look good and people don't respect it. And I see what they see now. So all of you that serve as elders and bishops learn at a certain time, like first Sunday, come prepared to sow so that people see you serve up to whom much is given. All right, everyone standing. Do you have anything to say? Our executive pastor, y'all know she just came through a procedure on Tuesday, but she's with us on this afternoon. Can you clap for Overseer Sonia Mixon, who will come? And have final words. Anytime softly you get work done on your back and they cut and snip, it's serious. She didn't have to come out, but she came anyway. So we're going to yield the floor. But pray for her. Pray for her strength. Pray that she needs no more surgeries. She's had 29, somewhere around 29 to 30 surgeries. And she survived COVID and cancer. The Lord has been good to her. Amen. My uh, son and daughter, I haven't said nothing, but Bishop L.K. Robinson just got the biggest promotion on a job ever. 
the possibility of making double what he was already making. His wife's so happy, she's spending money he ain't made yet. She's so excited that she already spending it, but she, in April, will become a licensed nurse herself. Come on, graduating nursing school. And she will go right back in to become an RN to be a registered nurse and we are proud of them and what God is doing through them and for them. Amen? Did we have church today? Are y'all going to eat good today? Hold the music because I see three people staring me down like he got a prophecy for me. I do not. And I'm looking right at you. Don't stare me down. I do not. I don't. All right. We don't make them up. That's how many people go to hell. We don't make them up. I can say something good to you and get you to respond and cry. But what if it's not God? It'll hurt you later more than help you. But good things come. I don't hear nobody. To those who wait. Good things. Where, where you working, Mike? Doing what? Okay. You said doing what? All right. I want you to run one time slow because the Lord says you're going to apply for a higher position. God's about to give you a new job. I know y'all don't believe it. So it's not that I can't prophesy. I can't choose who it is. This church is so blessed. They have used our praise dancers, our choreographers to travel. John P. Key and Kirk want to have John on a song or two. Uh, these guys are becoming super. They're just super. I can't say nothing about them. They're super. So much here. If we can ever get it to work effortlessly, effortlessly, like come to rehearsal on time, obey, don't worry, one day I'll show up, I'll tell you. And we need to uh, use what we have to the glory of God and not to compete against each other. Does that make sense? All right, how many believe this is a healthy church? That's what you're about to come do? No, you're about to give an announcement? Well, put the decree on the screen. You were, you were gonna do that too? All right, come on.